Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode of the Goobar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. In this week's episode, we're chatting about Flutter, Kotlin, and Kotlin multi-platform. We're going to compare and contrast these frameworks and try to provide some context into the problems they try to solve, their benefits, their risks, and the overall maturity of the two. Hopefully, by the end of this episode, you'll have a good sense of why both of these technologies have their place and don't necessarily compete with one another directly. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners like you. If you enjoy the podcast and find this episode useful, please consider subscribing and leaving a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or would like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode. And now let's dive in to today's topic. Is Flutter better than Kotlin? Should I learn Flutter or Kotlin? Does Flutter replace Kotlin? Which is easier, Flutter or Kotlin? Have you heard these questions before? Have you maybe asked these questions before? Maybe these questions are on your mind right now. Well, I think that's a, that's a very understandable place to be these days. There's so much discussion definitely around Flutter and, and Kotlin multi-platform is gaining a lot of traction as well these days, at least sort of in, in certain parts of the, the Android community. However, there is a bit of a problem with these comparisons. And that is that they are really comparing unlike things. The scope of Kotlin, the programming language, is relatively small in comparison to Flutter. Flutter is a multi-platform UI toolkit, whereas Kotlin is a general purpose programming language. Flutter does not replace Kotlin because it's not a programming language and isn't trying to solve the same problems as Kotlin. And conversely, Kotlin, the programming language, isn't a UI toolkit. Again, different concerns, different scope of problems that they are aiming to solve. Rather than comparing Flutter to Kotlin, a more apt comparison would be to compare Flutter to Kotlin multi-platform. Kotlin multi-platform is a code sharing solution built around the core Kotlin language. If we're looking for a Kotlin-based solution for building apps with a single code base, Kotlin multi-platform is our best option. But even comparing these two technologies isn't strictly accurate. Now, how do these two technologies sort of differ in their philosophy? What are they trying to do? Well, Kotlin multi-platform is really trying to share business logic. This could be things like core, algorithms, key data structures, things that you might have to re-implement from scratch in your, your data layer, your domain layer. Whereas Flutter, on the other hand, is really aiming to be a single code base for multiple platforms. So really a single project that you build and then deploy anywhere and everywhere that you need it. To try and sum these up succinctly, Flutter aims to build a cross-platform application, while Kotlin Multi-Platform is really aiming to build cross-platform libraries today. With Flutter, your code base is going to include the business logic and the UI for your app across all the platforms. This includes everything that is shared and also anything that needs to be customized for a specific platform. In a Kotlin Multi-Platform project today, your code base is going to include the business logic. You'll then separate the, the apps for each platform. So that could be iOS, Android, your backend, the, the common business logic, and maybe even platform specific logic will be a part of the multi-platform project. The UI and other platform specific logic will be a part of each individual app. Your Flutter project is your app, while your Kotlin multi-platform project will be consumed by your app. So with that, you have a little bit of context here for what these two frameworks are trying to do. What do these look like in the day-to-day? The -day? What are the languages and tooling 
that we're using for both. Well, in the Kotlin multi-platform space, we're obviously going to be using the Kotlin programming language. For, for IDEs, we're probably going to be using some mix of Android Studio, uh, maybe IntelliJ, um, and then Xcode, most likely for the iOS side of things. And then we're also going to likely need uh, Swift as well if we're building a multi-platform project to be consumed by an iOS application. Now on the Flutter side of things, if you're building in Flutter, you're going to be using the Dart programming language. And again, for IDEs, you're probably using some type of mix of IntelliJ, Android Studio, uh, maybe Visual Studio Code, possibly even Xcode. If you are building an app that is integrating Flutter maybe into an existing native iOS application, but, but largely you're going to be sticking to probably uh, Android Studio, maybe Visual Studio Code. Now, both of these frameworks uh, aim to target really all platforms. They, they want to be solutions that we can use anywhere and everywhere they would be needed. So what are the officially supported platforms for both? Well, as of Flutter 2, which was announced roughly a month ago at the time of this recording, the mindset for Flutter has shifted from a mobile framework to more of a general portable framework to enable deployment to a variety of platforms. Supported flat platforms for Flutter include iOS, Android, Windows, macOS, Linux, the browser, and even a variety of smart devices like uh, uh, TVs or um, vehicles. Now, very similarly, Kotlin Multiplatform supports the JVM. It supports targeting JavaScript for use in the browser or for Node.js applications. It supports Android and iOS, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, WebAssembly, and then again, a variety of sort of edge devices or other native targets like watchOS, tvOS, IoT, etc. So really here in terms of platforms that are technically supported, there is a lot of overlap between Flutter and Kotlin multi-platform. So in that sense, they are very similar. However, if we look a little bit closer at, from supported platforms to production ready supported platforms, we do see a big difference here. Flutter really as a whole is generally considered stable and production ready. The, the couple exceptions to that are Mac OS and Linux support while in the stable channel are considered uh, beta quality. So maybe not quite fully production ready, but still a good solid support there and it's in the stable channel. And uh, the one last piece here is that Flutter's web support is not fully universal. Flutter for the web is not necessarily something that you would think about building any and all sort of websites or, or server applications with. It's best suited for things like progressive web apps and, and single page web applications. Document centric approaches such as most traditional blogs aren't well served at the moment, though it is something that, you know, is, is being looked into, but it's, but it's not really a, a well supported use case today. But so we see there that in the production ready scope of things, Flutter is, is doing quite well. Most of their platforms are supported in a production ready, stable sort of level. Now Kotlin multi-platform on the other hand is quite different. It's much earlier days. So, Kotlin multi-platform as a sort of a technology set is in alpha. Now Kotlin multi-platform mobile is kind of a, a subset of this. If we think of Kotlin multi-platform as sort of this generic or general technology for sort of taking Kotlin and um, transpiling it or compiling it into targets for different platforms, Kotlin multi Kotlin multi-platform mobile is more of a specific product specifically for the mobile use case. So this includes the, the tooling to make the, the compilation for iOS and Android work, but it also includes you know, documentation and, and plugins and such. So this is a little bit more of a, a subset of the overall Kotlin multi-platform story. And although Kotlin multi-platform mobile has a bit more polish and is more of a, a real supported product, it is also still an alpha. Now, 
this this alpha status I think might scare some people away and I think that's very fair um, but there's a couple things we should consider here that uh, this is or Kotlin Kotlin multi-platform is Again, it's a, it's a set of tooling, it's compiler support, it's a lot of things. And so those could all be changing. The tools could change, um, something could change in the compiler that might break your application, let's say. But once you generate that artifact, particularly if you have some versioned artifact out there, that should continue to work. So even if the tool chain, let's say, is an alpha, once you have compiled your, your artifacts and you're integrating, let's say, a Swift package or, or a jar file or something, those should continue to work. So it's not as scary as maybe using an alpha of some other third-party library where the library owner is writing the functionality. In this case, you're sort of relying on alpha set of tooling while you are controlling the functionality. So it's a little bit different there. And at least for me, worries me a little bit less than other alpha libraries I've had trouble with in the past. Now, the one other aspect here here that I'll call out that is that while code sharing, uh, specifically Kotlin multi-platform code sharing, is an alpha, the, the Kotlin language on its own fully supports multiple platforms. So even if you weren't, let's say, using a Kotlin multi-platform approach to code sharing, you could still um, possibly leverage some level of code sharing across, let's say, Android and the JVM just by sort of maybe reusing code. If you even had to copy and paste, there'd be some low level uh, rudimentary code sharing there, or maybe even being able to share some files and pull them into multiple source sets. Uh, so it's still possible to use Kotlin across targets completely independent of this uh, Kotlin multi-platform concept. So the, the stability of frameworks is always an important thing to, to consider. Um, before investing in technology. But another thing we often want to do is look to others. Who else is using these technologies? Who else is having success with these technologies? Or who else is running into trouble with these technologies? And thankfully now for both Kotlin Multiplatform and Flutter, there's starting to be a, a good sample size of, of companies or organizations that are using these technologies and have shared their experiences with the rest of us. And I will include some links in the show notes to some of these case studies and examples so you can read more on your own and look through the full sets. But just a few examples of um, applications being built with Flutter today include the Stadia app from Google, which is built using Flutter. The Canonical team is making Flutter the default choice for new desktop applications for Ubuntu. That was one of the big announcements from Flutter 2 recently. Microsoft is continuing to invest in support for Windows with Flutter and also just recently uh, contributed some uh, code for improving the foldable experience within Flutter, specifically for their new um, foldable Android device, which looks really great. And then also uh, Square, you know, if you're familiar with the Android space, you're definitely familiar with Square and their libraries. They offer a plugin for Flutter developers so that uh, third party application developers can use Square's tool. So that's a, that's a nod there that, you know, Square feels that there's a strong business case here for supporting Flutter development. And then on the Kotlin multi-platform side, Netflix has talked about um, building an experience management SDK for their applications using Kotlin. Memrise has moved their client-side learning optimization algorithms into shared multi-platform code. And uh, Cash App is using Kotlin multi-platform in several small areas of their code base, some, uh, largely some underlying uh, libraries and such. So again, there's, there's examples here. There's use cases out here for both of these frameworks. They, they can work. It's all about sort of framing them and finding the right problem and picking the right tool to solve that problem. So speaking of picking the right problem, let's look at two sort of common use cases, two of the ways you'd think about using these. So we're gonna look just very briefly at integrating into an existing application and developing a new application with these technologies. So if we think about integrating one of these techs into an existing application, 
In my opinion here, Kotlin multi-platform has the edge because this is really its entire integration model. Kotlin multi-platform is not trying to be your application. It's trying to help you build it. So in this case, you're going to build some type of shared library, some type of artifact to pull in as a dependency to your existing application. So in that sense, you might have an entirely separate project out there, build it, publish your artifact and integrate it the same you would with any other third party dependency. So it's a very um, streamlined integration process here. And, and once you integrate that artifact, you're consuming it in native code like you would anything else. So it fits very nicely into your existing architecture, your existing code base. There's not many hoops to jump through. Flutter, on the other hand, can be integrated into existing iOS and Android apps, um, but it really works best when you know, the whole app is built in Flutter. Um, you can sort of publish a, a Flutter package and integrate that into your application. And there is a little bit of bridging code that you have to go back and forth. And this can sometimes be tricky with cross-platform solutions as you might have to uh, think about the format in which you're passing code across into the, the multi-platform solution and back to the rest of the code. Um, it can sometimes be tricky to isolate parts of your code so that they can be moved over into the cross-platform solution. So, so it, it adds to the complexity a little bit of your application and also adds maybe a new um, tech stack with which you need to be familiar to fully understand what's going on. And there's other one small limitation in this sense is that uh, you cannot package multiple Flutter libraries into a single application. So instead of being able to say, have uh, maybe an analytics package or maybe a sign-in package and a profile package, you, you would have to bundle all of those together, which is probably not too big of a deal, um, but does eliminate a little bit of the separation of concerns that you might otherwise want to preserve. Now, how about the other use case, developing a new app? Well, here I think Flutter has the advantage, definitely at least sort of in the early stages of an application. You know, it's going to be faster to set up a new Flutter project and deploy to multiple platforms. That's one of the really cool things about Flutter is you can have a project set up and deploy it to an Android device and an iOS device within minutes a lot of times. And that is a very compelling case, especially for, for new developers that are sort of just getting a taste of mobile development. Um, that is really a fun experience. Um, over time, as you're building out your application, as you're scaling it, Flutter may or may not prove to be the better approach. That likely is going to depend on a lot of different things, such as you know who you're hiring, the specific applications or specific experiences that you're trying to build. Uh, how much custom code do you end up needing for each platform? Are you ending up with lots of common stuff or can you truly build sort of a single experience and a single code base? All of those will impact sort of how useful and how scalable the, the cross-platform approach is over time. Um, and I think one other thing to be aware of is that with this Flutter approach, if you're building a new app, you really have to go all, all in. You know, it's like I said, it's not... Uh, super easy today to have a mix of sort of native code and Flutter code in one application. So if you're building out your single code base for Flutter and your app starts to break down or you start to feel stuck with what you have, uh, you don't have a lot of options. You kind of either have to stick it out or rewrite the application. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. It is a little bit more of an all or nothing approach. On the Kotlin multi-platform side of things, if we're developing new applications, it's going to be more work, definitely more work to set up and, and maybe more work to maintain. But again, it's going to depend kind of on your situation. Um, but initially, you're going to have to create separate uh, unique applications for each platform. So if you want an iOS app, you're going to need to set up an iOS project. If you need an Android app, you're going to need to set up an Android project. If you need a backend service, you're going to have to set that up. So you have to set up all those projects separately and then integrate the multi-platform uh, library into each of those, which again is something very used to doing because we integrate it the same as we would sort of any other third-party dependency. 
But again, it's just a little bit more setup. It's going to be more time from sitting down to create your new projects to being able to deploy Hello World on all of those projects with your shared code. Now, with this approach, though, might actually come less risk over time because of the fact that Kotlin multi-platform is really just kind of a, a another dependency, another library that you integrate. It means that if that shared code starts to fail, if it doesn't meet your needs for any reason, and you want to abandon it, you don't have to abandon your entire application. You can abandon that one module or that one piece of functionality and replace it with a new library. Maybe you replace it with another third-party library. Maybe you replace it with something else you build internally. So there's a little bit less risk there because it's not an all or nothing approach. And I think there's something to be said for sticking closer to the native dev experience, um, mostly because of the fact that you'll have a larger hiring pool to choose from. You know, if you want to go all in as a Flutter shop, I think that's totally viable these days. It's just going to mean a smaller uh, talent pool to hire from. Um, but on the flip side, those people are likely going to be very specialized and very good at what they do. So again, there's, there's trade-offs with all of this. Uh, the, the right answer is going to depend on sort of your, your organization, your situation, what you're aiming to, to build out. Now, speaking of the job market, um, when I do these comparisons, I always just like to do a quick search into LinkedIn jobs just to sort of look at some rough numbers of the types of roles that are out there. Um, so I did some quick LinkedIn searching in the US. And at the time of my search, there was um, right about a thousand uh, results for full-time or contract positions looking for Flutter, you know, that they were mentioning Flutter, wanted Flutter in some capacity. And on the flip side, in comparison, there was only 39 that um, mentioned Kotlin multi-platform. So again, that's a thousand mentioning Flutter, 39 for Kotlin multi-platform. So there's there's obviously a huge discrepancy there. Um, one small asterisk I'll add to this though is that while there's only 39 for Kotlin multi-platform, if you looked at the results for let's say just native Android with Kotlin or native iOS with Swift, those numbers would be much, much, much larger than, than Flutter, more in the, the tens of thousands. So why do I mention that? Well, that's because in the Kotlin multi-platform sense, while yes, you have to learn you know, some Kotlin and you have to learn some of this Kotlin multi-platform tooling, the majority of your development is still going to be sort of in those native iOS and native Android development experiences. So the, the skill sets there are going to be a little bit easier to find. Um, you're not going to have to teach someone Flutter if they don't have experience with it because they're likely going to come in with that existing native development code. So, so again, I think there's something to be said here for the hiring story behind these technologies. I think hiring someone that knows the native tech and can pick up the Kotlin multi-platform side of things is going to be easier than hiring someone that doesn't already know Flutter, but then has to come in and learn it just because it's a, it's a larger thing. It's a larger departure sort of from the native development experience for both mobile platforms. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of the nature of the technology. It's trying to be different. And because it's different, there's a lot of good that comes with that. So speaking of people needing to come in and you know learn these technologies, let's chat for a minute about learning resources. And this one is very easily a, a win for, for Flutter. There's far more learning resources out there for Flutter. That's something that I think Google has really invested a lot of time, money, and energy into is sort of the the developer relations side of Flutter, the, the learning resources, um, events, uh, contests, things like that. So there's an abundance of courses and blog posts and YouTube videos and conference and meetup talks, etc. Lots and lots of content out there around Flutter. There's a lot of Flutter specific GDEs as well that are out there to, to answer questions and to help create this content and help the community really learn behind it. Kotlin multi-platform, on the other hand, 
is still in more of a, a grassroots, community-driven learning research stage. Uh, we do have JetBrains out there promoting Kotlin multi-platform and creating some sort of sample projects and such for it, but we don't really have anything on the scale of full-fledged courses or really in-depth tutorials on on youtube or things like that there's some there's some really good blog posts on how to make things work um, you can find good information out there but it, it's a little bit harder to find there's not as much of it and it's not as comprehensive yet i would say because the tooling is still um, developing at a pretty rapid rate so which then becomes easier to learn uh, this is a kind of a difficult question to answer because it largely depends on what you already know. If you have zero mobile experience and you want to just learn how to build an app and get it built as soon as possible, I think Flutter is going to be the easier bet, largely because of what we talked about, that it's it's easier to get up and running and deploy quickly. If you already know how to build Android or iOS apps and you just are looking for a solution for sharing some code, I think Kotlin multi-platform is probably the easier way to go because it's going to be easier to integrate into a native application. On the Android side, you're not even really having to learn anything new. You're still writing the same Kotlin that you're already familiar with. And from coming from the iOS side, Kotlin is going to feel very similar to Swift. So it's not going to be quite as much of a learning curve as Dart and Flutter would be. Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, there isn't a clear cut answer to this. You know, it's going to depend on your experience, your your interests, your your goals, what you're wanting to do for your career, what you're wanting to build. You know, if you have more questions and want to chat in more of a one-on-one -on -one sense, feel free to send me an, an email um, or or message me on social media. I'm happy to chat about this and try and give some insight into your specific situation. So as we start to to wind this down a little bit, just want to touch on the overall maturity of these a little bit if we start to to summarize this comparison i think this will be useful so flutter as it stands today here in early 2021 um, is a much more mature framework than kotlin multi-platform I, I don't think there's really any argument here it's stable it's production ready across most of its target platforms it has more learning resources out there um, i'm pretty sure it has a much larger community than Kotlin multi-platform does. I don't think there's any real question about that either. So, you know, I think on, on pretty much any sense here, it is a more mature sort of framework at the moment. Kotlin multi-platform on, on, on the other hand is still quite early, but I do think it's reaching kind of an inflection point here where it's becoming usable enough that more people are going to start using it and hopefully that is going to accelerate its uh, its adoption and its improvement i do think that it is a lower investment or sort of risk which i also think will open it up for more teams starting to to use it and experiment with it it sticks closer to the native development experience for its target platforms so i think that means the the skill set is a little less specialized which again i think potentially opens it up for use across more platforms and more teams. And uh, I think it less likely to find a job or team specifically looking for Kotlin multi-platform, but it might be easier to find ways to start using multi-platform within a team. So let me, let me phrase that another way. You know, if you are on a team right now, it might be easier for you to convince that team to try Kotlin multi-platform than it is for you to convince that team to start using Flutter. And again, I, I think that way because of the integration model, because it's easier to integrate a, an extra little shared code library than it likely is to integrate a Flutter package into your project. Now, when would you want to use one or the other? Well, um, again, this is going to be a very subjective list here. Uh, but in my opinion, you might want to use Flutter if you are a single person or a, a small team that wants to build a greenfield app as soon as possible. You might want to use Flutter if you are a contractor learning to uh, build and deliver one-off apps for clients as quickly as possible across multiple platforms. 
you know, if you are a team of any size and you need to build an app uh, in a one-off fashion, maybe you need to build a conference app for an upcoming event, or maybe you need to build some type of internal uh, app for, for employees that is not likely to change that often, I think Flutter is another great choice here. Um, or if you're a team that happens to have Dart developers hanging around and you want to let them contribute to the code base in multiple platforms, Flutter would be a good option potentially. And now on the flip side for Kotlin multi-platform, I think Kotlin multi-platform is a good choice for existing teams that want to share code between their existing native applications. I think it's a good choice if you are a single person or, or in a team that want to build a, a new app using native tech stacks, but also are looking towards how you can share and reuse code for your core business logic. And then lastly, you know, if you are a team that has some Kotlin developers hanging around and you want to find new ways for them to contribute, Kotlin multi-platform is probably going to be an easier way to go about that. So to just wrap up here, to kind of summarize this comparison between uh, Kotlin multi-platform and Flutter. If we look at these technologies, you know, comparing Flutter to Kotlin multi-platform is much more interesting and accurate than comparing just Kotlin the language to Flutter, even though a lot of the questions tend to be Flutter versus Kotlin. It's not strictly accurate. While both support cross-platform development, they do have very different philosophies, which greatly impact how developers build and integrate shared code into their applications. Flutter is much more mature at this moment at pretty much every facet that you could think of. Kotlin multi-platform is improving very quickly though, and possibly has fewer barriers to entry because of its integration model. And lastly, and again, this is my personal opinion, but I think that there's a place for both of these technologies. And I think that mobile developers benefit by having multiple viable tools for code sharing. And I, I think that there is good overlap here that will hopefully drive both forward, but I also think there is plenty of space here for differentiation and for them to live side by side. So I'm, I'm excited that both are out there in the community and look forward to seeing where they both go. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and be sure to subscribe for future chats about software development and career. And remember, if you have a question or a topic idea, I'd love to hear from you and you can send those into podcast at goobar.io for your question or idea to possibly be featured in a future episode. Thank you so much for listening, devs. Remember to dream, learn, and create, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs. <laughs>